So uh, the idea here, um, you know, I've been working with John at Freebell, John Rista, and I'll help be, he's right here, and he's going to help me if I get, uh, if I stumble on anything. Um, the idea here is we kind of wanted to present a series to the community, kind of bring uh, this information to the community in terms of RxJS, because I know uh, myself included, uh, you know, I've been doing Angular 2 and beta releases for about two years now. Um, and I started right in with observables, but I pretty much had no idea what I was doing, except I could subscribe. So I was like, okay, good, great. Um, so uh, diving into some of these details has really helped me as a developer to understand what I'm actually working with. And it's also unlocked a huge amount of power uh, that observables come with, right? And there's this whole idea of reactive programming that just is kind of challenging, but once you level up, if you will, it just kind of opens up uh, a lot of possibilities. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about RxJS, and we're going to be looking at the operators, right? So last month we talked a lot about the foundation of RxJS and some of those, those classes, right, like observable and subject and notification and subscription, um, and that's kind of what we need to know to move forward, right? So now let's dive into operators. Um, so I'm going to do, we're going to have some demos here, and I'm also going to go through some slides. If you can't see anything, or if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or uh, just interrupt me, yell at me, throw things at me, it's cool. Um, so what are operators? Uh, operators are pure functions. Um, does everybody know what a pure function is? Don't be afraid. Okay, Reed knows what a pure function is. Reed, what's a pure function? It's um, a function that causes no side effects, doesn't necessarily uh, you know, rely on anything not passed into it. Yep. <coughs> Right, so, and that's key, right? So not only the no side effects thing, right? So it's not using, you know, put that kind of maybe dumb that down a little bit. It's not using variables or, or any functions outside of the functions. Everything's contained within it. And what that means is if I give it the same values, I, it produces the same result every time, guaranteed, right? And so we call that a pure function. And one of the benefits of pure functions are, well, I mean, put you on the spot. Right, you yeah, know, they're, they're. Starts with M. No, nope, close. So we often will use them with immutable objects, but they're memoizable, right? And so what we can do is we can cache it. Because we know that we always get the same value returned from that function based on the same inputs, we can cache it. So if I call a function the second time with the exact same inputs into that function, boom, it just returns that value because it already computed it. So there's no need to do it again, right? Um, and so operators are pure functions, right? And so they transform information in the observable stream. Right? So observables, you know, we kind of talked last month about promises and then going to observable land. Promises are kind of this really great solution for us to do asynchronous activity in our web apps. Uh, but it's really like uh, one and done, if you will, right? It fulfills or rejects. Um, whereas observables are this stream over time, right? Uh, so we're, we're getting multiple values over a series of time. And so that's what we mean by the observable stream. Observables create a new observable, often based on the current. Uh, so uh, observables get the value that was emitted to them or the notification that was emitted to them, and they uh, often transform that value and then return a new observable. Uh, observable or operators allow for a complex asynchronous code to be easily composed in a very declarative manner. Um, that's kind of a heady talk for basically we can do some really powerful things really quickly and easily. And we're going to hopefully dive into that. And it'll make a lot of sense. Um, most commonly, when we think of operators, um, we think of them as, I guess, yeah, absolutely. So they're methods of the observable class. So they can be either static methods or instance methods. Um, and so we know subject extends observable, right? So subjects also have those same methods. So our observable generators, these are what we think of as like creation observ uh, operators. Um, and those are going to be static methods that are laid on the observable class. So in RxJS, it's rx.observable.whatever operator. Uh, those might be like of or, or create and these kinds of things. Um, and then these often create these new observables without any input. And I think you probably saw a couple of those in my last presentation, and we'll have some of them here as well. And then this is where it really gets uh, large, right? So the static methods... There's probably 15 to 20 of them somewhere in there. There's just a guess. 
Uh, and then instance operators. This is where we're, we already have an observable. We want to transform. We want to uh, we want to filter. We want to do things with those notifications, right? Uh, and the this scope, not really essential to know uh, when working with operators, but the this scope is basically the input to the is is the input observable to the operator. And we also mentioned that they're composable, and this is actually what makes them really strong, right? Um, operators all return an observable, so we can chain them together, right? Um, or you might say they're pipeable, but definitely don't say they're lettable, because I got lit rid of that. I don't know if anybody caught on to that little joke. Uh, but when RxJS 5.5 dropped, we called them lettable operators, but they're no longer lettable, they're pipeable. Uh, and that's because we're going to use the pipe method uh, on the observable class in order to pipe through uh, our chain of operators. Uh, subscribing is also another really uh, important thing to know about the composability of operators. Subscribing to the output observable will also subscribe to all the input observables. Uh, so if I have like a switch map that outputs an observable and I subscribe to that, it'll then in turn subscribe to the input observable to that switch map. Uh, so real briefly, um, for those of you, and actually I should have mentioned 5.4 here as well, if you're on Angular 2 or 4, I believe, you're likely using ArcsJS 5.4. And that's where you could just chain operators in like a dot syntax, like dot do dot map dot filter dot switch map, right? And you just kind of chain it like maybe jQuery-esque, right? Um, and then we came out with the pipe operator in 5.5. And part of that was for, uh, for, uh, for performance reasons. And so that's the latest stable release right now uh, as of this talk, so 5.5.6. Five, uh, so if you're on Angular 5, it's soon to be Angular 6 here in a couple weeks, um, you're going to be using RxJS 5.5. Five. And all of my demonstrations are going to be using <laughs> RxJS 5.5. Five. Um, and just note that you use those same operators. It's actually like four or five that they renamed. But in general, you're going to be using the same operators. You'll just do like a dot chaining notation rather than putting them all into the pipe. Um, they're working on an alpha release right now. I think it's alpha three as of this talk. Uh, you can go check it out. So 6.0 will be dropping. I don't think that's coming in Angular 6. I haven't seen it on the release notes or on uh, the, the weekly uh, Google team updates. So, so maybe that'll be Angular 7. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, okay, cool, can I import all the operators? Um, yeah, you can do that. Uh, not a good idea. Uh, there's a lot of them. It's a lot of code. Uh, so be kind to your users. And that's part of our XJS 5.5 uh, where we're going to use tree shaking to only import uh, the actual operators that we need and we want to use in our application. So we only ship our bundles with that code. So we can import a single operator. Uh, so this kind of shows you the 5.4 version up top uh, where we use a string notation. Again, it's, uh, we can't do any tree shaking because it's not static. Uh, but that works, basically just adds the switch map operator uh, onto the prototype. Or we can use RxJS 5.5 import syntax where we're actually importing the switch map function from RxJS slash operators. And so if you're using 5.5, uh, that's what you want to do. So how do we chain? Uh, and I, I want to do a couple intro slides, and we're going to dive, don't worry, into all the operators, and we're going to yeah, go through them all. Uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, so here you can see that I'm just chaining them with dot notation. So I've got just dot map right on my user observable. Uh, you can see it's an observable of type user. And then I'm just going to change switch map onto that, and then maybe return an observable out of switch map. I can do that same thing in RxJS 5.5. We're going to use the pipe method. So now on the user observable, we have a new uh, instance method called pipe. And then that just takes a, a comma separated list or just uh, as many operators as you want into the pipe and you just separate them all by comma. And so that map, whatever, uh, you know, the output of that is the input into the next function. So it's ordered. Okay, so uh, obviously we're all Angular developers, or mostly all Angular developers. So what about Angular? Uh, Angular loves observables. Uh, you know, observables are a key concept in Angular. Um, sorry, React, you don't get observables yet. You'll get there one day. Um, and Angular allows for uh, 
Oh, so we all the asynchronous tasks in Angular use observables. Uh, so activated route, param map, it's an observable. Uh, HTTP client, observable, right? So anything that's doing any sort of asynchronous activity is going to use an observable. Um, and we kind of talked about this last month. You know, the async pipe is your friend, so use it. Um, and it's really powerful and makes our lives easier. So how many operators are there? Uh, we came out with a rough number. I'm not sure if that's entirely correct, but there's about 75 of them. Um, so uh, we'll be done tonight. If you want to just like text your significant other about midnight, 12.30, we should be done. It should take too long. Uh, I've got a demo for each one. I haven't worked for a month and a half. Uh, uh, so you might be asking yourself, okay, sweet. Or maybe you've looked at uh, re you know, reactivex.io slash archjs and you've gone to that site and you've just like endlessly scrolled and you're just like, holy cow, man. Um, so you might be saying, well, okay, well, how do I choose the right operator? So this is actually, I didn't know about this until it was somebody did a talk I was watching on YouTube and they showed it and I was like, no way, that's tucked in there. Um, so if you actually go to the RxJS homepage, they have this like wizard called find the right operator. Has anybody used it or heard of it? No, okay, let me just switch over real quick because I do think that'll be, I just want to show you where it is because it is kind of tucked in there. Uh, Probably need to bump this up, right? So see there's like install it, learn it, full reference? Check this thing out down at the bottom. And basically you say, okay, well I have an existing observable and I want to change an emitted value to be calculated through a formula, you want to use map, right? It's actually really nice. Uh, and it's really helpful, especially if you're new to RxJS, like I was like a year ago, I'm just like, I have no idea what operator to use and I don't want to look through all 75 of them. Um, so this is a really great way to like, this is what I want, or this is what I have, this is what I want, and it really kind of help you solve that problem. So I hope that's beneficial. <coughs> oh, the other way, uh, you know, we look, at the do we look at the docs and you're going to notice these like kind of funky looking diagrams. Um, we call those marble diagrams, and this is taken from the documentation website. Um, and we're going to be looking at marble diagrams, so I'm going to quickly go over this. I want to make sure we all understand what a marble diagram is and what it does. Um, so up at the top, we've got a timeline, left to right, it's an arrow. Um, and we've got values that are being emitted. In this case, they're represented by these little marbles. Yeah, And you can see that when that value is emitted, it goes into a operator, in this case a flip operator, which I don't think exists, but it's a great example in this instance. Um, and then you can see the output is on the bottom stream. So this is the observable out, so the observable input is the observable output. Uh, you'll notice a what we, well, it's a pipe character in RX marbles, but basically a line. And this is our completion notification. Remember we talked about the three different values that are emitted in a notification. We've got next, uh, catch or an error notification as well as a completion notification. So that is the completion of the input stream. And then we've got our output stream. Uh, that's the result of the transformation or the operator. And then here we've got an X which uh, denotes a, um, it's, it's an error. Yeah, thank you. Yep. So it terminates abnormal. So <coughs> cool. Does that make sense to everybody? Good. Um, so I'm going to be, just to give you a quick overview, I'm going to be kind of, I wanted to do this all with an Angular project, but I didn't have a super great example that used every operator I wanted to cover. So bear with me. Um, I'm going to use a sample application that I wrote over New Year's weekend. Um, it's just a Tour of Heroes application. Uh, I'm lazy loading modules in this app. I'm using Angular Material for my UI. Uh, I've got a core module for interceptors, models, and services. I'm not going to be showing you necessarily all this code unless you guys want to see it. Uh, there's a state module. I'm using NGRX with actions, effects, and reducers. I've got stateful containers and stateless components. Uh, so you're going to kind of see this in the demo app. Uh, for those of you that are following along, feel free to clone it out. It's on my repo, so it's slash belove slash NGRX tour of heroes. So you can check that out. 
Um, I'm going to be working off of, I have a bunch of branches on there. I'm going to be working off the NGRX Refactor 2 branch. Um, and there's a server folder in there and a client folder. Client is Angular 5. Um, and the server folder is a JSON server that we're going to be using just to serve up a simple REST API. Let me show you what that uh, is going to look like. So you have kind of a, this isn't necessarily RxJS, but in general, this kind of gives you an idea of what we're, what we're looking at. Um, so this is a Tour of Heroes app, because we do Angular, we do Tour of Heroes. Um, I've got superpowers, right, that my heroes can have. Uh, this is a little big. Uh, I can add a superpower. <coughs> I can save it. I get a little snack bar at the bottom. It gets appended to my list. I can edit a superpower. I can delete one, obviously. Uh, and then pretty much, it's pretty much a simple CRUD app. We've got heroes as well. I actually, just for fun, I uh, uh, implemented the Marvel API. So when you add a superhero, it's going to pull from that. So we can do like super, and then we'll get all the Marvel superheroes. Uh, so we can do super adaptoid. Never heard of that one, but I'm sure it exists. And we can say it's got strength and extra vision. Hit save. Um, oh, I think there's actually a small bug in this branch. Um, and then when we go to it, that's what super adaptoid looks like, I guess. Uh, it gives you a description. Both those get pulled from the API from Marvel. I apply the strengths, and then there's some more information about it. So, Cool. So that's kind of the sample app that we're going to be working with. All right, let's dive in.